Hi and welcome. We're going to take a good look at Blues in the Attic by Nikki Isles. Nikki Isles is a composer I much admire and anything with her name on it in this style, whether it be an arrangement or an original piece, um, I would highly recommend. So let's tuck in now. I'm going to go nice and slowly, both hands together, and we will bump into all sorts of things as we go. So the first thing is to get this funky, straight quavers feel. Um, they're not swung quavers. Now, I might regret playing that because that's put that into your mind, but it's not that, it's... where the quavers are played strictly in time. It might be worth setting your metronome to play individual quavers. Something like that. One more time. Just to get the feel for it. Now in the performance video that I did, I in the middle of that video, there was a whole chunk of time on exercises to help us feel syncopation, those offbeat notes. And um, so I'm not going to dwell on that here, but once you've got the rhythm, articulation is going to be really key, isn't it? What notes are staccato? What notes are linked up? And of course we need the fifth finger there, which will be a bit of a leap, so that we can hold on to it when we add in that lovely jazz chord. It's a, it's a nice chord because it's basically a D major, or is it a D minor? There appears to be an F sharp and an F natural, both at the same time. And when you play both the major third and the minor third, with a nice gap, this gap makes it sound even more juicy. We get that delicious sound that she uses elsewhere as well. Staccato D. Again, holding on to the what notes need to be held on. In so much music, that's often in the inner parts, isn't it? And here we've got an alto D that needs to be held. It's all part of that chord. Now then, we have all sorts of accents here. We've just seen in bar, um, <laughs> my whole punch has taken off the bar number, one, two, three, bar four, here, <laughs> we've just seen that chord there, haven't we? Now that has a tenuto sign. Tenuto, make sure we hold on to the note, give it its full value. And I like to think of a tenuto sign as being bold font. It's like a lean on it. Give it its full value, a bit more pressure. Whereas in the following bar, we have an accent. Quite simply, a bit of extra pressure, a bit of a whack, but give the note whatever value it's meant to have. Attack it aggressively and give it its full value. And in a moment, while we're discussing these different uh, accents, um, types of articulation. In bar seven, we've got a marcato sign. Marcato, marked. So this note has to be, this chord in this case, has to be more prominent than anything else. A bit of a whack. So you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between that and an accent? I think marcatos, if anything, I tend to stress them even more. And important, crucially, they are short. really quite aggressive. So let me just uh, give an example of, I'm gonna play a chord, let's play a, a nice sort of funky chord. I'm gonna play it twice. And the second time will be with the accent. Tenuto held. Accent. 
mark after. So now let's go from bar four. Tenuto, accent, and notice how I held on to that chord until the D. Yeah? Aim up for the D. Da 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 da. So hold and then nice and short and punchy for the last of those three. And that th number three is a fingering, not a triplet sign. One can quickly glance at it and think, oh, wow, well, I say that's a triplet. It's not. <laughs> so bold font, just lean on them, give them their full value. A slight sense of coming to the end of the phrase. That is the first chunk. Lovely, lovely bass line there, isn't it? Worth just getting the feel of that. And now we have the middle section, more relaxed. I'm going to get rid of the music for a minute. Now, this piece is written in it's D minor. And it's D Let's think natural minor for a minute. If I start on the fourth note of the scale and I go up in fourths, and the next note, if I had a spare finger, I'd arrive back at D. And that sequence of things in fourths is so, so useful. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna play a chord now I'm in D minor, D natural minor. I'm going to play a chord on each of those notes. So we had a D, up a fourth goes to C, up a fourth goes to F, up a fourth, up a fourth, up a fourth, landing on D. I'm going to alter one of those chords, you probably know, perhaps you know which one, the very last line I put in the C sharp, because that just leads us so nicely back to D minor. Now I could add in a bass line, goes to C, goes to F, goes to B flat, goes to E, goes to A, goes to D. And the last stage in this little um, <laughs> keyboard harmony thing would be to add a seventh to each chord. A simple triad. And to pep up these chords, let's add the seventh. Here we go. One, two, three. Let's turn that into a dominant seventh around the sequence again. Now put those chords in this hand and put a melody over the top and you're away. feeling creative, give that a go. Now then, let's back, go back into bar 10. Music back and... Now the 
fingering on that bit will be important. Getting the fifth down there. And keeping that top line as legato as you can. And we're, we're moving our fingers around this position on the piano. I would definitely want to work on that on its own for a little bit. And round the sequence we go again. <laughs> yeah, that change of finger. Whilst we hold it on. And why are we doing that? It's in order that we can play really smoothly that bass line. Again, did you notice those accents in there? That lean on that one for the tenuto. And a bit of a whack, nice and short, both hands at the end. And then we're into familiar territory, aren't we? Jump the fifth, that lovely major third, minor third thing combined. Hold the D, tenuto, accent, third. Tempting to get louder, but not yet. Keep it in reserve. Mm, I think the fourth finger on the F is more comfortable. Fifth, perfectly possible. A bit more awkward, I think, though. To finish it off. Let's do that last line one last time. So, a great piece, lots to get stuck into there. Working out the syncopations. Again, look at the other video perhaps to get some exercises for that, working out the rhythms. And then it's a question of really detailed articulations, making sure you're holding on to the right note at the right time. Can I make a distinction between my tenutos, my accents and my marcatos? And if you would like to play this with a backing track, that's available to download as well. Best wishes and bye-bye for now.